All right, we're going to do a video showing yet more scriptures that refute this Gnostic Calvinist heresy that God is the cause and author of sin. And I'm going to say this too. You know, I used to have some grace for Calvinism early on, you know, early on when I first got saved, when I was, you know, really new in, in salvation. I uh, used to, you know, okay, they're just off on a few points. It's mostly just the hyper Calvinists that are kind of the, you know, the really into heresy. No, as I, as I study Calvinism more and more, and as I actually go back and forth with Calvinism more and more, I'm learning more and more that it's not just hyper Calvinism, but just Calvinism as a whole is just full on heresy and false doctrine and full on just Gnostic uh, heresy, pretty much. I mean, these people literally believe. I mean, anyone who, like Calvinist theology literally makes God the creator of sin, you know? It, it's just that simple. Like James White, I showed a clip of him literally saying that essentially God causes child rape because he's the cause of sin. So When a child is raped, is God responsible and did he decree that rape? If he didn't, then that rape is a, a, an element of meaningless evil that has no purpose. What I'm trying to point out by going to Scripture... So what is your answer there? Because I, I want to understand the answer I'm, to that I'm question. I'm trying to go to Scripture to answer. The, yes, but the what reason, is the answer to the question that the, he just asked so easy, that we can understand what the answer is? I, I, I mentioned to him, yes, because if not, then it's meaningless and purposeless. And though God knew it was going to happen, he created without a purpose. So... Yeah, Calvinism, as, you, as I study it more and more, uh, I'm learning more and more that it's just full-on heresy. It's not just off on a few points that we can just agree to disagree on. If you think that God is the cause and author and creator of sin, that's not something I can just agree to disagree with you on. Sorry, that's full-on heresy and blasphemy. But here's more scriptures that refute this false doctrine, this Gnostic heresy that God actually causes and wills and preordains sin. So first of all, uh, and these are just four verses on the top on the matter. It says, uh, basically what these verses are showing is that God wanted to show Israel mercy to Israel, but they sinned and it was by their own choice and their own fault. Okay, God didn't force them or cause them to sin. They did it by their own choice. Hosea chapter 6, verses 6 to 7. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. Hmm. But the Calvinists would say, oh, no, no, sorry, God, you actually preordained them to do this. You know, then why is God getting mad at them for doing it, for just doing what he preordained them to do? It's, it's, it's full on inconsistency at best. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 6 down to verse 11. And these are just a few verses. There's like tons of verses on this, this whole thing. These are just a few ones I'll, on the top, on just quickly listed on the top of the matter. Just, just basically click, quickly list it off, you know, as a reference. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse... 6 down to verse 11 it says then the lord said unto me proclaim all these words in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem saying hear ye the words of this covenant and do them for i earnest for i earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that i brought them up out of the land of egypt even unto this day rising early and protesting saying obey my voice yet they obeyed not nor inclined their ear but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart therefore therefore i will bring upon them all the words of this covenant all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. Uh, it says, And the Lord said unto me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They are turned back into the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry, they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Okay. And I want to point something else here as well. He says, I will bring evil upon them because Calvin is like twisting Isaiah chapter 45 verse seven to say like, where it says, I create evil. Okay. What's the evil talking about in that verse? Okay. It's talking about physical calamity. Okay. It's not talking about moral evil because if you know, if you read the verse in Isaiah 45 verse seven, it says, I create, you know, I make peace. I create evil. Okay. If God was talking about moral evil, he would have said, I create righteousness and create evil. Okay. But he doesn't do that. He's contrasting peace with evil, not righteousness with evil. How do we know that? Well, it's because, you know, he brings evil upon them. It's not talking about moral evil. It's talking about physical calamities. So they like twisting that verse too. They make it seem like, oh, God actually is creating evil. But again, the evil being talked about in that verse is calamities. It's physical, not moral evils. So anyway, but again, we see there, they're doing a sin and God's holding them accountable. They have no one to blame but themselves. Okay, God didn't preordain them to do it. Because essentially what Calvinism does is God preordains you to sin and it gets mad at you for doing what he just preordained you to do. 
you know? That's, that's the God of Calvinism. See, Calvinism literally makes God worse than Satan because Satan only tempts you with sin, but in Calvinism, God outright causes you and preordains you and forces you to sin. So, that's, that's the God of Calvinism for you. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. Another verse on the matter. Jeremiah 6, verse 16 to 19. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear ye, nation, therefore hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. So they did it by their own choice. We see here, okay? They're doing it by their own choice. He's trying to get them to, to hearken unto him. But they're resisting him. Kind of goes against, makes a problem for this whole thing of irresistible grace. He's trying to do it. He's trying everything they can. But when they refused, they had no one to blame but themselves for when God punishes them. But in Calvinism, they would say, well, God actually preordained them to do it. And then gets mad at them for doing what he just preordained them to do. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse uh, 23 down to verse 26. Last verse on the matter. But this, but this thing command I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of, uh, came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily, rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. But wait a second, I thought God was preordaining them. But no, he's saying they're doing this. I'm trying to get them to, you know, hearken. I'm sending them prophets, and they're still not listening. Why? Because, and, and notice too, you know, the imagination of their evil heart. You see, God's telling them, you're doing this to yourself. You're doing this by your own choice. You know? But the Calvinists would say, well, no, God actually just preordained them to do it. And then is getting mad at them for, for some reason, even though he's, they're just doing what he preordained them to do. Yeah. Again, Calvinism makes God worse than the devil because the devil only tempts you with sin, but in Calvinism, God outright forces you and causes you to sin. So, and these are just a couple of verses on the matter. There's many more I could, could have covered, but these scriptures show that, you know, God is holding them accountable and they have no one to blame but themselves for the sin they did by their own choice. So, Again, refutes, and it also goes to show too that God did not want them to sin, but they, they did it anyway, and He's punishing them as a result. Okay, it shows that God is not the author and creator of sin. Refutes this whole Gnostic heresy of Calvinism. So anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism and its Gnostic heresies like that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.